Hi, I'm Master Conley, and this is Dan Kleinke. And today we're going to be demonstrating a hop keto for the session cycle for green, purple, blue, and brown. Uh, they are all uh, same, uh, well, not all same side, there's three same side wrist straps this time, and one cross wrist strap. The first two are uh, sister techniques. I'm actually going to switch spots with Dan here, and I'm going to grab the same side here. Keep your hands on, keep all the hand always up, drop down your chance. Just like from your white, yellow, orange, white, you always fan that hand out into a light hand. And we're gonna do is I'm gonna go one direction and I'm gonna go the other direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this way, and then his natural tendency is once you yank his arm one way, he's gonna try to pull you up the other way, and he's just gonna kind of help you. I'm gonna circle up here. As I circle up here, I'm gonna grab on another hand, I'm gonna break the grip here, I'm gonna fold his wrist into an inward wrist lock here. I, I fold it, I can get that Z pattern in, drop his hand down the ground. Right once his hand drops down, I can come up either roundhouse or front kick right up into the face, or I can be a little more aggressive now. They, they always hear, well, don't do axe kick in the street fight. Don't do, don't do axe kick or don't kick up the head level in a street fight. Well, that's true for the person standing up, but in, in the self defense world, when you're doing locks and stuff like that, and you're down in this position here, his head drops down below your, below your belt level, then it's, it's perfectly fine. So those rules don't apply to that when you're, the person's down so I can either easily kick him to the face off compromising my balance, I can easily drop my foot down on top of the head and not compromise. So that ass kick right there on the brain, at the brainstem area, good knockout technique. I, I come out in, I come in, boom, hit here, I draw him out, I lay him flat the first way, I come right over him, and I have a shoulder lock, at the same time I have a good wrist lock here. Okay, so I can, I can hold him here. I can tell him, put the other hand up behind your back, please. Put the other hand up, three around. Good. So as a law enforcement, then I can come in and I can secure him here. So good, this is a good technique. So the sister technique to this one is, starts the same way. He's in here, but I'm gonna be a, a, little, more, uh, a little more aggressive with this one. I can come around here right away, and where I'm gonna put my thumb is right along here, there's a pressure point right here, I'm gonna come up and hit the pressure point. You can't see this, but I'm going to push against his thumb and break his thumb here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, take an elbow and do an arm bar. I'm going to do the arm bar into me, so I'm going to pull him into me here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come across my legs here. So right now I'm scissoring his neck and his jawline here. You can see him tapping there. I'm squeezing in. I still have this pressure point. I still have a wrist lock here. I still have an elbow lock, and I have a shoulder lock. So I have all these locks right here, all wrapped up in one. So there's a nasty thing because. You start out with a pressure point, you start out uh, with a mild wrist lock, you go with an arm bar, uh, you bring him down with one hand, you bring your, your legs over the head, you crank into the neck with your knees, and at the same time doing shoulder lock and elbow lock. So he's got a lot of, a lot of pain, there's pains of all elements of his arm. You got you have, you have a pressure point right here, you got an arm bar right here, you bring him down, you're going into a neck crank with your legs, you're going into the, in the shoulder lock and elbow lock. So you got a lot of different locks going on. I'll do it one more time. So from here, if he's coming in, light hand again, I pull one way, I come around, I hit him in that pressure point area, I break his thumb, I pull him down towards me. Now if he goes flat, there's not much you can do, you can't pull him back up. If he drops on that one hand, like most people will, you come in and lock right in here. Okay? I don't let go of one in control. Try to punch me, try to punch me, see? I mean, don't punch, grab me, like a grappler. I'm, gonna, I'm always going to focus where my control is. My control is always in that. In that pressure point, in the wrist, in the elbow, I will not, uh, you know, when you're working self-defense, it's not like UFC where, you, you know, you're trying to get him to tap out. In self-defense, if you need to, you just take it all away. So you're not looking, you're not necessarily looking for submission. So a lot of times, you know, you see uh, people tapping on out in the videos here because we don't want to hurt each other. But you got to also remember is we're teaching uh, self-defense. So the technique, in real life, if you have to use it, you just take it all the way. You're not going for a tap, you're not looking for a belt to wear at the end of your, your self-defense in that match. Next one here, the third, uh, third one on this, on this belt bubble here. Light hand here, and again, I'm going to go this way, and he's going to pull against me, and I'm just going to go with it. You see, I just took a step at the same time, so I pull this way, he goes to me, pull, I pull up, and I step in, and I spin step. As I spin step here, I have a mild wrist lock, and then I'm not going to worry about it. I'm coming in right, right, right here, and right, right, right here. So one, two, three. So watch again, so I come in from here, I'm going to do a little finish a little differently this time. Come up this way, circle up, step in, spin through, strike, strike, and you can see him on the back side this time. I hold the arm, the reason why I hold the arm so he doesn't come back and elbow me here, or back fist me here. I hold the arm here, I pull him backwards off balance. As I'm jerking him back, you see him losing balance here, I'm going to kick his leg over my hand. And I can finish up from here. You're coming for hard style, hitting a lot and you're not up. So that one more time, we'll do it from this angle. 
So you can, you can see, he's coming in, he's grabbing. I go light in the end here, this hand stays up, I jerk this way, I pull it this way, I step all at the same time, I spin, I hit, I hit, I'm not high here. See, I've got this arm, not for locking it, just so I can control it. I start pulling him off the outside, I kick the leg underneath him, and I can lock up here. Okay? So, that's that third one, and the last one is a crosser strap. So you have the same side, cross side, then coming in here, so he's crossing the wrist grab. I'm going to circle, I'm going to counter grab. I already lost the script right there, it's fine. So I come in, I circle, I counter grab here, I step in, knife hand in the shoulder, and I do a shoulder lock. I sit take it down. I come here, I drop down the rest of the leg, I scissor, I do an X right here, I push on the shoulder, right now he's tapping from the shoulder lock. If you want to be a little more aggressive on the takedown, you can, but you might lose the shoulder lock. He might have a tendency to uh, barrel roll on you. And if that does happen, then I can then you can either hold on and go to the outside wrist side or just let him roll away from me. It doesn't really matter. So from here, you know, cross hand, I go a little more aggressively down this time. That this is a whipping action. So that's a strong whip. So I come around, I circle, I whip him, so I'm whipping him here and you can see I take it down. That time he landed fine, but sometimes that first of all tends to roll and there's so much energy going into that technique. So tension and can and can. Thank you very much. Practice hard. Practice these uh, carefully. You'll, remember, you're moving up in your belt ranks and stuff like that. These are lives. These aren't breakaways. So you're, when you're practicing this with your partner at home, if you're practicing with your partner at home, uh, be careful. Always uh, follow the rules. Uh, tap up. So if it does hurt, make sure you tap up. Make sure you communicate to your partner. Um, but you know, have fun working on these. Good. Thank you very much, sir.